it's about five o'clock on Sunday. It's absolutely pissed it down a few minutes ago, but it's actually dry now. So while I've got a couple of hours, I'm going to carry on reinstating bits and pieces around the engine bay. All the bits that I painted yesterday are looking great. Um, I'm just trying to remind myself of quite what I need to do and what I'm trying to achieve. Um, I'm going to fit the new water pump. I'm also going to drain the old engine oil and change the oil filter. I've bought some new oil to go back in, so I'm going to do that while I've still got quite good access to the front of the car and before I put the underbelly panel on. Um, and then I'll just, I don't know, make it up as I go along really. So it's the oil merrily draining away. Um, I just thought I'd have a look around on here. That is the bottom of the front subframe. That should have a nice round plate on it. And basically you can see that it's all been torn off. I think that's yet more, more evidence of it having been smashed around by forklift trucks. Um, here we have our anti-roll bar. The bushes are a little bit bent and distorted but I have a cunning plan for that. Um, steering rack gaiters are knackered both sides. I've ordered some new ones but they haven't arrived yet. Um, not really much else to say other than if you look on these the front subframe is actually spaced down from the chassis rail. That's a bit different to normal SD ones. I think it must have been just clearance to actually get the engine in which shows you how tall it is compared to the straight sixes or the V8s. It's the little things that make me happy. A genuine Unipart oil filter for a diesel. Ta-da! Even there's like the Unipart branding on it as well, which I just think looks really cool in a British Leyland engine bay. So I'm going to wait for the oil to drain, get the old filter off and put that one on. I'm going to pre-fill it as well. It's good to have a proper Unipart one because you can see there's the um, check valve inside. A lot of the pattern part aftermarket filters don't have check valves like they're supposed to, which is often why they're cheaper. Um, I can't find my oil um, filter removal tool, so I might have to get a screwdriver and just smash it through there to get it off. We'll see. It just started raining again, which is very annoying, but um, it's not too bad. Seemingly out of a blue sky, which is very annoying. Otherwise I wouldn't have bothered bringing all my tools out. Um, I can't find my tool and I can't find any grips that are big enough either. So I am going to have to smash a screwdriver through it. Um, and then hopefully it will come off. Screwdriver inserted. It's really on there. Oh. Yeah, even with that technique it's not wanting to budge. Oh, there we go. It's moved a little bit. So that's either been on the car a long time, well evidently it has, or someone's done it up far too tight, but I um, might have to pull that screwdriver out, reinsert it and try again. Got it off eventually, had to put quite a few holes in. Um, it's quite a stupid arrangement because as soon as you release it, any oil is going to dribble out and of course you can't easily pre-fill the new one to go back on. Well, certainly not without making a mess, so yeah, annoying. Oil change complete. I'm starting to prep on this water pump housing. Even with a wire wheel on a drill, that one, there's still remainders of the gasket that refuse to come off, so I'm giving it a gentle poke with the chisel, and then if that doesn't work, I'll have to go and find I don't know, a real sharp razor blade or something. For, for any of you who have seen the earlier videos from this sort of series on this blue diesel, you might remember that I had problems with one of these two bolts. I can't remember which one it was, but basically one sheared off got stuck in a block and I had to weld a nut to it to then get it back out. So basically the threads aren't, uh, they're, they're okay, but I thought I'd, it would be worth taking the opportunity just to um, clean them out a bit so I've got an old um, tap and I'm just going to run it in and out of each of them to clean out any dregs that are in there and then I'll uh, go find the new water pump and its gasket and install that. 
I did try to record this but it went horribly wrong but anyway I've been um, cleaning out those threads and then blasting brake and clutch cleaner into them to blow all the debris out forwards so that's done that'll evaporate off I'll go and get the water pump here's my new water pump here's my new water pump gasket just a paper jobby um, so it's probably enough but I'm also going to give it a quick smear of Hylamar blue as well and then I'll put copper slip on all of the um, bolt threads before I put it back together just so that they can't seize in there again like last time so there's my water pump <clears throat> with its paper gasket and a very very fine skin of Hylamar blue and then on here we have my bolts these two are new because the old ones one had snapped and I had to weld a nut to it and the other one was basically looking crap and these are the two longer ones they're actually the, the originals they're okay so I'm just gonna put it together now and bolt it up got the water pump on that's all nipped up I don't have the torque um, like values because I don't have the proper workshop manual or I do I think but I'm I can't be bothered to go and get it so I've just nipped them up um, it's time to reinstall some of these other ancillary parts that's the little port that goes in there then we have a, another actually that must be for that yeah so that's the copper washer for that bit then there's a tiny little woodruff key which goes between the shaft and the pulley when I've found what I've done with that and then there's just a little rubber joiner hose that goes up I think to the thermostat housing not not sure can't remember but I'll go and roof through my box of bits and work out what I think needs to go in next well the good news is I found my water pump pulley and I still have the woodruff key the bad news is that this is a pattern part water pump and basically that shaft is too thick in diameter for my pulley so I'm either gonna have to ream that out or sand that down at the moment I'm thinking it would be easier to sand that down because I'm not sure I've got anything big enough that's going to ream that so I'll have to go and find some sandpaper or something and just have a go at that I think it might be stainless steel if it is that'll be really annoying because that'll take ages well I started off with the sandpaper going round and round and round and it was hardly touching it it started getting dark and I thought stuff this I'm going to go and get a big nasty mean tool so I got my die grinder and um, shattered it around the inside of there a bit just to open it up that's worked really nicely because it's quite an easy fit until you get to the end and then it's just a nice push fit so that's good I don't really understand why they've had the tolerances so close on that because it's held by a woodruff key then that massive nut and it's sitting on a shoulder so um, there's absolutely no play in that and that's with it just pushed on so when it's bolted up it will be fine Whoever designed or machined this water pump really wants a kick in the balls because I've just offered up the woodruff key into its groove in there and guess what? It's too narrow or the hole's too narrow, that's too fat so I'm going to have to take that in and now sand it thinner so that I can get it in there. These little things just hold you up and this is why something that should be a five minute job turns into like a half an hour job and if you get enough of, enough of them in one day it's enough to really piss you off. Kind of going round in circles with this water pump. Basically, when I got it, it had this spacer nicely machined, which sat back here, and that recess covered a split ring that's on there holding the bearing in. But if you have that in there, when you fit the water pump pulley, it doesn't align with anything whereas if you take it out suddenly it actually aligns with the rear um, groove on the crank pulley down there which I think is where it should be so I need to go and do some research to work out what's going on and possibly review some of my earlier photographs so I'm going to leave it there with the water pump until I've worked that out because what I don't want to do is smash that on there and then find I've got it in the wrong place so I'm going to go find my headlights and start cleaning them up and their brackets and start putting the front together got my brackets they're ready to go on um, 
before I fit them, I'm going to put some anti-corrosion stuff across the underside here of both brackets in the front and all these bumper irons before I bolt them up. I've got two. One is Dynax UB, one is Dynax UC. Both of these do exactly the same thing. They're an anti-corrosion in an aerosol um, and they're a wax like wax oil. Both of these are for the underside of the car. UB stands for underbody and it comes out brown. UC is exactly the same stuff but clear, I think. And they're both made by Built Hamber Products who do all of the sort of Hydrate 80 and um, Rust Neutralizers, Deox Gel, Deox C, all that stuff. And they seem to be really good. So I'm going to put uh, the brown stuff where I don't care if you can see it. So all of the underside here, where I um, repaired, restored and did whatever, I'm gonna shoot with this. Then UC, I'm gonna put across the front where there's the potential that you'll see it when the bonnet's up. But I just wanna make sure all of this is really nicely protected because there's no point doing all that welding and then not to treat it properly. Once the car's together, like we're talking a long way down the line, but the idea is um, keep this as a rolling restoration, but ultimately get the whole of the outside resprayed, four new doors, bonnet, tailgate, the lot. When that happens, I'll dinitrile the whole lot as well, but for the moment, this is like a really good first step. So, it's quite cold today, but the um, aerosols are usually like powerful enough to just come out anyway. Yeah, see, it's already working. I don't know whether that's coming across, but yeah, I'm just gonna do the whole of the underside here and then I'll fit the headlights and that. I don't know whether you're going to be able to see this but basically that's what the underbody clear looks like and I've just toshed it all over my paint all the way across the front here into the front of the bumper irons then under here I've done the whole of the underside both um, like chassis legs I've sprayed loads into the lower rad brackets and um, done it from the front down here as well so it's pretty much dribbling off it did my rail which holds the oil cooler and then did all the way in there all the way along both sides and the wheel wells <laughs> up in there as well so basically the whole of the front should be protected now um, it's runny when it goes on but then it sets hard and basically they say on the can that it'll last for a year when it's getting eroded by road spray and dirt and stuff. So when the underbelly panel is on there that should last for ages because it's not going to get any direct impact from rain and spray and stuff and then um, yeah should be nice. So I've also done the back side of my brackets with the underbody clear and now I'm going to go inside now and clean up my headlights. These are my new second-hand replacement headlights. Um, got them off my mate Phil. They were taken off a car a very long time ago and they've got loads of garage dust in them. But they don't have any chips to the glass. The plastic cases are fine and the upper mi uh, fixing bolts are fine as well. Usually they shear off. Um, the only other thing to check is the adjusters because they can seize and snap off but they seem to be free. So I'm just going to clean them up, take the adjusters out, copper or like anti-compound, what was it, anti-seize compound, basically copper slip the adjusters and anything else I can think of, then get them ready to fit. Just started cleaning these up and um, made a couple of discoveries. The first is that the reflector in this one is much, much brighter than this one, so the silvering has started to die off. Um, this one has its foam still, which goes between the headlight and the uh, front wing and the indicator. This one's missing that, but I think I've got some at home in a box somewhere. The adjusters are all good on this one, but on this one, the thread in the insert has sheared so that you can move the whole thing forwards and backwards like that. So what I might have to do is go home, get some other headlights, and then take these apart, using taking off these spring clips, strip them back, re-silver them, fix the adjuster, and then um, put them all back together again and put them in the car. 
for the moment, because the show is on Thursday and it's now Sunday, I'm just going to dry them out and fit them in the car like that. It's only when it comes to MOT time that something like that adjuster um, will be a problem because obviously the reflector can move inside the headlamp and then change where your dip beam cutoff is. So they can sit there drying out and I'll go back out to the car and see what else I can do. We have the headlamp brackets on, we've got all the little brackets for the um, front grille bar as well on there. There it is, on the end. So they're all covered in the underbody goo as well. Then over here we have my nice shiny new bumper courtesy of Richard from the SD1 Club. It's not brand new, um, it's got a bit of damage but compared to the one I had it's much much better. This is actually for a car that would have had headlight washers and front bumper overriders so it has the holes for the um, washer fluid and then that's what would have held the overrider on. It would also have had stainless steel trims which um, I don't have. The ones on my car were absolutely knackered so um, that's going to go on there for the moment but I'll be taking it off to titivate it and um, fix it up a bit. But for the moment I just want it on there. There is quite a lot of adjustment in the bumper irons. All of this can move left and right like that but there's only round holes which actually hold um, the bumper like there's two threads on the back of here so it's important that you get the bumper on and in the right place then nip them up take the bumper off do them up properly then you know when you come to fit your bumper later that it's going to be in the right place so I'm going to play around with that for a while and get to get it in the right place well that was my first go and it actually looks pretty good obviously it needs to go back a long way but the actual gap to the wing, both sides, is just shy of a finger there. Um, the tail end has broken off the bumper on um, the near side, but it looks about right. So I'm going to nip up the bumper irons, take that bumper off, and then um, I can look for the other bits and pieces that I need to go in there. From memory, I need to mount the horns and probably the underbelly panel then I think the grill bar and then the bumper goes on last. The headlights actually need to go on before the bumper because I think you need to be able to get to these. Um, can't, sh can't remember how much clearance you've got when the bumpers actually push right back in there. Okay, those bumper irons are somewhere close. I haven't done this bolt up yet because I remembered that actually on the back side of those goes the horns, one each side. The original horns were completely goose. I bought a second hand set, but they were fucked too. Excuse my language, ruined. Um, so I bought a new pair of Lucas horns, which are supposed to be for this car, but I know from previous experience that they don't actually fit because the they would originally have been suspended on these, which bolt to the top and then that big hole would have been on the back side of that bolt and then they sit in there above the underbelly panel but from memory on the police car that didn't work and I had to mount them somewhere else I'm trying to remember exactly what I did but anyway that's going to take some fiddling but I think that's going to have to wait for another day because it's pretty much dark it comes out lighter in the camera than it does to the to the eye but yeah it's dark it's Sunday night so I'm going to go I don't know, maybe fish and chips tonight. I've had enough kebabs. Or a curry, I might have a curry. Uh, and then Antiques Roadshow. Hmm, happy days.